Easter is the most important event in the Christian calendar. Despite its global reach and cultural significance, Easter has attracted minimal academic attention since the 1970s. Remarkably little is known about the festival's genesis when it first appeared in Britain, the origin of its component customs such as the giving of eggs and the Easter bunny, or how they coalesce to form current practices. Equally obscure are the timings and circumstances by which the animals that come to be associated with Easter, notably the brown hare and rabbit, arrived in Britain. The AHRC funded Easter Egg Project is tackling this cultural and natural history puzzle. Evidence from archaeology, zoo archaeology, linguistics, art history and evolutionary biology is being integrated to inform our patterns of human diaspora, both physical and ideological, and processes of religious syncretism in ancient, early modern and present day societies. In addition, it is refining the natural history of the brown hare and rabbit, charting their impact on ancient biodiversity. The project is also exploring the shifting baseline phenomenon, whereby people consider the socio-environmental circumstances of their childhood to be natural and morally absolute. In the absence of deep historical and archaeological understanding, these nostalgic ideals are adopted blindly and often erroneously as the foundation of decision-making both at a personal level and more broadly in science and policy. Nowhere is this better exemplified than in discussions about native versus alien status, be it in relation to animals, people or religious ideologies. While Easter and its animals are all, in inverted commas, alien to Britain, they are viewed positively because they arrived in the long forgotten past. Easter is therefore an excellent example to highlight the impact of shifting baselines and challenge negative attitudes to cultural and biological aliens. Through the project's outputs, we hope to encourage people to reflect upon childhood memories and recognise their own role in the shifting baseline phenomenon. Alongside traditional academic research papers, our dissemination strategy includes a research-led novel, an animated film and artworks. These outputs are linked to our planned exhibition at Butzer Ancient Farm. Our children's author Adrian Bott has written stories on the introduction of these animals, built upon the results of our programme of radiocarbon dating, zooarchaeology and genetics. These stories have been illustrated by Judith Doby of Historic England, taking inspiration from the buildings at Butzer. In Easter 2020 and again for 2021, we had hoped to run in-person events at Butsa, the ideal place for delivering impactful engagement. Using the different buildings, we plan to hold storytelling and craft activities, leading people through the site and through the animal's biocultural history. In the Iron Age Roundhouse, visitors would hear of the arrival of the hare and their likely sacred association that rendered them above consumption. In the Roman villa, the introduction of the rabbit would be presented and they're spread from elite sites out across the country. In the Saxon buildings, the decline in the hare and rabbit population in the post-Roman period would be explored, as well as the development of their Christian association from the conversion period onwards. Working with artist Ben Frimmett, visitors would be encouraged to make representations of how they see these animals, forming part of a long continuing change in their representation. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has curtailed our in-person events both in 2020 and again for 2021. Although we hope this year to be able to record our stories remotely and make them available online via Butcher's YouTube channel. If permitted to open in early April, we'll also have an Easter egg trail where people can follow the Iron Age part of the story themselves, learning about these fascinating animals as they move through the site. However, we hope in the not too distant future, we can hold our full event and tell our research stories in person.